درود من نیکانگ کوزه هستم در واشنگتن دی سی با برنامه دیگر از ایرانیستاز با شما هستیم روز گذشته شاهزاده رضا پهلوی به دیدار نمایندگان کنگره و سنا رفت. مهمترین است که ما بتونیم صدای همیانانمون رو رساتر بکنیم در سطح بین المللی علل خصوص وقتی سر و کار داریم با قانونگذاران کشورهای مختلف که از دید سیاست خارجی به خصوص بتونن نظر مثبتی داشته باشند در جهت هر اقدامی که در جهت توانمندی و حمایت از خواسته های مردم ایران باشه یکی از اهداف همیشه که من بوده هست و این یکی از این فرصت هست مسئله عمده این هستش که چگونه می توان در جهت حمایت از مردم ایران و فراتر از مسئله که تا کنون بیشتر محدود بوده به مذاکره با رژیم یا محصور کردن رژیم که هیچ کدوم پاسخ مثبت نداده تو تمامی سالها محوریت رو ببریم رو بحث مهم و اونم نیست که خود مردم ایران نهایتا قدرت نهایی برای هر تغییری هستند بدون هیچ مداخله خارجی و این حمایت از مردم میتونه کف ترازو رو به نفع آنچه که منافع ملی نه تنها مردم ایران از سوی ولی شاید منافع کشورهای خارجی هم باشه در اون جهت سوق بدید از آقای کینگ درباره وضعیت آینده ایران با توجه به بحران آب سوال کردم آقای کینگ عضو کمیته کشاورزی مجلس نمایندگان آمریکا است. Right now I don't know how we work through the existing regime in Iran to accomplish those things or many other things. And I've long believed that we need a regime change in Iran. Uh, but let's let's bring this thing about with a kind of an effort that is wise and it is preparing for the long term and for the best interests of the people of Iran and the world. Shahzad, چطور بود جلسه امروز؟ خب بسیار نکات جالبی خود کانگرسمن کینگ مطرح کردم که علامت این هستش که مسلما مسئول رو با دقت دنبال می کنن. برای رسیدن به راهکارهای سازنده نیاز به کار خیلی بیشتر و نتیجه چند جلسات خیلی بیشتری هست که کارشناسان مختلف چه در زمینه سیاسی چه در زمینه که این تغییرات به چه شکلی میتونه انجام بشه لازم هستش که واقعا روش کار بکنن و این یکی از نکات و فعالیت من همیشه این بوده که بتوانیم بهترین مغزها و بهترین تخصصها رو در ارتباط بگذاریم با کسانی که مثل کانگرسمن کینگ که کارشون اصولا در زمینه سیاست مختلف این کشور به عنوان نمایندگان مجلس کشور هستند بدون که به چه شکلی میتونن واقعا مفید باشن چیزی که به نفع مردم ایران تمام بشه چیزی که منافع ملی ایران رو نهایتا تامین کنه و منافع خودشون رو هم به نوعی تامین بکنه این نوع هماهنگی ها و صحبت ها و دیالوگ ها بسیار بسیار حساس است در چنین زمانی همیهنان من بارها و بارها از من خواستن که تا اونجا که ممکن هست بتونم توجه جهان رو به مطالباتشون به خواسته هاشون به حرفشون جلب بکنم و این یه نمونشه ولی من میخوام فراتر از فقط رساندن پیام مردم ایران یک پله فراتر بریم الان زمان برای یک تغییر بنیادین فراهم داره میشه و لازم هم هست چون ادامه این وضعیت برای مردم غیر قابل ادامه هستش مملکت ما تمامیت ارزی کشورمون مسائل زیست محیطی کشورمون ادامه این تشنجات در منطقه هیچ کدوم از اینا به نفع هیچ کسی نیست به غیر از جمهور اسلامی به عنوان یک نظامی که میخواد هر جوری شده سر پاش وایسته بنابراین 
ما بسی بهترین راهکار رو پیدا بکنیم که با کمترین هزینه ممکن برای مردم ایران این کار رو بتونیم به عمل برسونیم و دقیقا منظور از این نوع ملاقات ها رسیدن به نحوه انجام کار هست سوال دیگه این نیست که آیا این مشکل رو باز برطرف کرد سوال این هستش که چگونه این مشکل رو برطرف بکنیم و رو این داریم کار میکنیم در اصل چکرم شما شما طور مشخص آیا روی یک انتظار خاصی صحبت کردیم با کنگریس منکی یک خواسته خاصی رو مطرح کردیم در خب مثل هر چیزی یک مسائل خاصی هست که که باش بهش توجه واضحی بشه و راجع به هر کدوم از این نکات خب یه موضع گیری مشخصی هم لازم هست یکی از مهمترین مسائلی که برای خیلی ها مطرح هست به عنوان قانونگذاران کشورهای خارجی و سوالی که میپرسن این هستش که خب اگه این حکومت بره ایران چه خواهد شد آیا ایران تبدیل به یه سوریه میشه یا آیا ایران تبدیل به یه عراق میشه که من در این جلسه به خصوص کاملا اشاره کردم که اصلا ایران خیلی فرق داره با خیلی از کشورهای اون منطقه ایران یک کشوری است که صده ها بلکه هزاره ها یه قدمتی داره از نظر تاریخی که انواع اقسام اقوام ایلات مذاهب مختلف تو اون مملکت در یک یک پارچگی زندگی می‌کردن من بهش گفتم که موقعی که من 13 14 سالم بود و با تیم ملی فوتبال ایران که زمنان بردن بازی رو دیروز و خوشحالم که داریم میریم به جان جهانی همه جور با بازیکن از نقاط مختلف ایران داشتیم خوزستانی داشتیم آذری داشتیم شمالی داشتیم کرد داشتیم بلوش داشتیم نمیدونم کلمی داشتیم مسلمان داشتیم زرد همه جورش بودن ما ما به همدیگه به عنوان ایرانی نگاه میکردیم پس از دیدار با این نماینده جمهوری خواه شاهزاده رضا پهلوی به دیدار یک نماینده دموکرات رفت از ایالت کالیفرنیا این to support democracy, to support civil society. And uh, we can do that through broadcasting and perhaps a, a better job of broadcasting. Um, and we can do that uh, uh, by just expressing uh, our solidarity with them. Uh, but ultimately, uh, democracy for the Iranian people is going to be dependent upon the Iranian people. Democracies pay attention to the environment. Democracies pay attention to water. And when you get a regime that's dedicated to a theology or an ideology rather than to the people, when it's not responsible to the people, you get the kind of environmental disasters that you see uh, in uh, north of Iran, in Central Asia, uh, and uh, other environmental disasters uh, like the air in Beijing. شاهزاده رضا پهلوی در نهایت به دیدار سناتور جان مکین یکی از سرشناسترین سیاستمداران فعلی آمریکا رفت. شاهزاده رضا پهلوی پیش از دیدار با سناتور مکین به مسائلی پرداخت که به زبان انگلیسی از ایشون پرسیدم اما با زیرنویس میتونید صحبت‌های رئیس شورای ملی ایران رو بخونید. The principal issue as a first Uh, element that I bring to their attention is that neither a policy of so-called engagement or dialogue nor an attitude of containment or isolation of the regime has yielded any meaningful results over the past nearly four decades, irrespective of which administration has been in the White House. I do uh, mention this to most legislators, not just here but around the world, that it is a little bit awkward that in all these years the dialogue with Iran has been limited to the current regime and its representatives, and that the majority of the Iranian people who are against its regime and the secular democratic opposition that can speak for them has yet to be directly engaged in any kind of dialogue. So the first thing I tell them is that if you really want to have an answer as to how to resolve the crisis in the region and Iran, you ought to be opening a channel of communication with those who can represent what the people in Iran have to say. My, one of my primary functions has been over the years 
to be a voice on behalf of my compatriots and what is their aspiration and demands at the level of the international community. However, we're getting to a point in time where a direct engagement and support for the people of Iran has to become an issue. Iranians have often faced a situation where they have braved the streets only to be literally thrown under the bus for lack of support. Today, despite all the hardship, despite all the repression, they are still struggling. And I believe that a movement that can bring realistic change has to come at the hand of the Iranian people and within our civil society. Except for this civil society is operating all by itself. It has virtually no support whatsoever for the international community. And therefore, I believe that a very important, critical country like the United States can play a crucial role in empowering and giving more support to the Iranian people and their aspirations. So this is one of my specific objectives. How can we bring legislators in this country to understand better the dynamics of change in Iran and in what way can they be supportive of our national struggle for freedom and democracy? Iranians who are seeking freedom and justice and liberty understand fully that as long as this regime is in place, they will never attain any kind of expectations that they have in that regard, whether it's their social freedom, their religious freedoms, or the kind of discrimination that they face under this theocracy. So ultimately, they know that the regime as a whole has to disappear. In other words, they understand that this regime is irreformable. However, as long as the world is willing to maintain the status quo, and as long as there's no real change in the sense of a regime change in Iran, they will be forced to settle for a typical choice of having to choose between the lesser of the evils, which has been a constant practice and tactic by the regime. To tell people, well, this person is the least uh, uh, venomous as opposed to the other candidate. But we know it's not a true election. Iranians deserve to have the freedom to choose for themselves freely what they want in the future. And that's what this movement is all about. در پایان این دیدار فرصتی ایجاد شد که با آقای مکن درباره مسائل مختلف و صحبت هایی که با شاهزاده داشت گفتگوی انجام بدم. First of all, we should learn a lesson from the Cold War and that is the message of freedom, hope, democracy uh, penetrates. It penetrates everywhere. I'll never forget coming to Burma There was three guys there. The average time one had been in jail was 18 years. They came over and they, they, they thanked me. They thanked me after all these years that they spent in jail. So first is, is a message. And then second, obviously, we have to help various organizations that are willing uh, to take some risks. But Radio Free Europe is one of the vehicles that won the Cold War. We won the Cold War not just because we had more weapons than the Russians. We won the Cold War because the Soviet Union was doomed to failure. The, my message to the Iranian people is that uh, we now have a new administration. Yes, it is unpredictable, but the last administration, unfortunately, was predictable. In other words, we failed. We failed to stand up for democracy and freedom. We're going to send our folks to Radio Free Europe, find out what's wrong with that message. We're going to work with all of our opposition friends here, including the spiritual leader, and uh, we, will, um, we will succeed. Right now, Iran is succeeding. They have just established a corridor that goes all the way from Tehran all the way to Beirut. That is very dangerous. And so we've got a lot of work to do, um, but I believe the Iranian people are sophisticated, they're knowledgeable, and they want to live free. We are sending our folks over there, and I know how much they hate to have to go to Prague in the <laughs> springtime, but they're going to go. But uh, we've been fooling around with this for a long time. It isn't just about Iran. It's about the way that the thing has operated since the end of the Cold War. So our message is, help is on the way, we've got a lot of work to do, and I cannot predict always what President Trump will do. But I can predict 
that he's got the best people around him that I've seen in many, many years. Thank and you. Senator, if I may ask the final yes. question based on what we discussed about what will happen tomorrow in a different Iran to the members of the military, to the members of the uh, Revolutionary Guards and others, what would be your message to them based on the, what we think could be a, a peaceful uh, outcome of this my message, strategy? My message to them is change is taking place all over the world. My message to them is it's time for a change in Iran. It's time the Iranian people had a free and open society and a functioning democracy. One of the world's oldest civilization, the Persian Empire, it's about time they got into the 21st century.